Hey everybody, how you doing today? Uh, we have ourselves a trimmer, home light trimmer. And uh, this trimmer I got for us to play around with to see how uh, how well we can get this back to back to life to get it running. And um, it is a I think this brand is it's on the lower end side. Uh, home light. So let's talk about it. It's in a various stages of uh, disrepair. All right. So right here, the most obvious is the uh, that um, primer bulb isn't. It's cracked and missing. And um, if you look down here, the fuel tank is missing. A hose, and I think that hose might go to. Oops, let me get some light on there for you. I go to there. So that's, and that also also missing. So both of those hoses are uh, compromised. Um, I hear some rattling when I move it around. I mean, it's pretty obvious that something is not where it's supposed to be, and. Uh, before I proceed uh, with anything else, I'm going to try to see if I can get some spark out of that spark plug, see what it looks like. The engine is definitely not seized, that pulls. I don't know how much compression it has or if it has good compression. And um, yeah, it's a two stroke engine, so it uses a 50 to 1 mix. And um, yeah. Uh, I don't have any of that stuff sitting around at the moment. Uh, it's irrelevant for me to say that to you. So anyway, uh, yeah, it doesn't have any oil. There's no oil pan or oil container because uh, the engine fuel mixture is a combination of oil and fuel. So let's see. Uh, this looks like a some kind of a uh, filter. An air filter of some sort. Yeah, this would be an air filter because that's the carburetor right there. Okay. So. Alright. Yeah, that's decayed pretty badly. Alright, so, so that's gonna. I'm sorry, let me show you what that looks like. Yeah, so that's pretty decayed. It's like falling apart. Alright, so I'm gonna need need a need some uh I need a new filter. I don't know if this gets oiled or not. I'm not really sure. But uh, we'll find out together, won't we? Alright. This is the kill switch. Um pull start or rewind, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Primer bulbs missing. Fuel tank. Uh, a th throttle. Let's see what that does. If I pull that. What does that do? Okay, that does that. Okay, that's good. Well, that's not binded up or anything. It's just one less thing to worry about. Um, down here, when I yank on the, uh, when I yank on this, that's what happens. I'm yanking on this, and that turns. Okay, cool. So, let's do this. First thing I'm going to do is take that shroud off. Um, this is the uh, I have a T20 uh, T25 that I'm going to use to remove the shroud. Oh, 
of looks like that. It's a kind of coarse threaded. Uh, Skirts. Um, the reason why I'm doing this is I need more access to get to the spark plug and the engine parts. So this exposes the uh, exhaust also. I need to check for sparks. So I'm going to pull this off. Let's see. Just tighten it up a little. Some. Right. Spark plug's got to come out. Um, all right. That is a three fourths socket for the spark plug. Looks pretty good. I don't see any like carbon deposits or it has no spark. Just a couple more pulls. Did you see a spark? I thought I saw a spark. So what I think is happening here is uh, uh, I don't feel like my kill switch is actually uh, causing anything bad to happen because uh, hmm, okay my my thoughts are this ignition module right here I'm gonna have to like get access to it so to take this shroud off the kill switch over here uh, let's see how well we can see this. Try my best to see if you can get as close as possible. Okay. Um, if you can see it, the kill switch goes in and it will, right here, push against something metal back there, probably ground it out and then uh, cause this uh, to terminate, uh, kill any spark. It's The spring works well, it's not touching anything. So I don't think this is actually causing a problem. I feel that the uh, ignition module under here, I need to look at that and see what the connection's like. Um, so we're gonna pull these uh, bolts off right here and uh, get this out of the way. We're gonna use the same T, uh, T25. Um, let's make sure, yeah, T25 to remove these. So 
So that just holds the um, the uh, this in place. Uh, the 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 um, uh, throttle, and that's what that is. Looks like that. And then we have underneath here. Same screw. And uh, just so you don't just see my entire head the entire time. Alright, there you go. Come on this side. So I'm going to block your view. Looked at the video the other day of myself and I was like, oh, no. I've achieved gray hair. Quite a bit of it. We have down here. There's another. Now this is going to put up a bit of a fight the, of the pull start or rewind uh, the rewind. Um, we call it a top because the. Um, This is loose. Wow, that came off a lot easier than I thought. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, let's just, I didn't expect it to come off like that. This is interesting. But something else is gonna come off. Ah. Okay. So let's show you what we got. All right, this is what we have. Taking all those screws off led us to this. Um, all right. Now let's make sure that yeah, that screw's still there. I'll, I'll I'll push it out so we don't lose it. Okay. So what we have here is this ignition module. I have to. I'm going to check and see first off the. Um, As this goes around, I need to make sure that those, this has a clean connection to that um, flywheel right here. So that's going to be a key part of generating um, a small electrical charge. And then this will send that charge to the, uh, down the wire, to the spark plug. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and take that off and uh, clean it up. And then we'll have to check the space in. I want you to see something. Uh, the um, this kill switch right here. This wire, right? Um, so well, when this kill switch grounds out to the body of this chassis, this connection, this wire, is what goes directly to the kill switch right here. Um, so that's, so I just wanted to share that with you. Now, here's the thing, I'm gonna clean this connection here and maybe this could have just failed, I don't know. But we'll have to do a test specifically on that after we clean it, put it back together and try to pull on and see if we get any spark. So before we, we proceed, if you wanna know what this part number is, if you're going to need to order this, it's JDCP space 06504-A and that's MA-12 space 0340. I'll take a photo of it right now so we can have it as reference. Seems like everything on this is the is a T25. So uh, that 
225 Torx, just in case you were wondering. I'm going to pull this off first. Hmm. So I saw Alita the other day, the movie. Wow. Actually, not the other day. I saw it yesterday. Opening weekend, Sunday. Pretty awesome. First one in the theater, last one to leave. And uh, I was impressed. Really, really impressed with that movie. Did anybody else see it? If you didn't, I recommend it. It's entertaining. All right, um, so we have two, two bolts that are gonna connect onto here. Now, before I pull this apart, right, can you see this? I want you to take a look at this. Um, see right here? I don't know if I can get any cleaner. I'll get a cleaner, cleaner look at it for you. Yeah, that's better. All right, so as this, as this turns right here, right, these points right here, that, and there's another one right here. When you pull that pull start, this is what's turning. And then this is what helps to generate an electrical charge. Um, I'll show you what it looks like on the side over here. This will, these little pieces right here, it's very important that these connect. These have a clean connection to this. And that's going to create spark as it goes around. Like that. A charge, an electrical charge, I'm sorry. All right, so that's what we're going to try to do. We're going to try to clean it up, remove this, clean it up, and see what, uh, see what we can do. Uh, we can proceed. All right. Can you see? Yeah, let me back out some. Let me, let me a little too close. Now the distance between the ignition module and this flywheel is really important. Um, it has to have a certain distance. Uh, you can use a feeler gauge to set that distance. Um, see it slides around. Yeah. Um, so you can use like a like a card. Three and a half inch, um, just a little hard card. Uh, what do you call it? Um, you know, you write on it. Use it to study. <laughs> Words are so elusive to me at times. You make flashcards, you know. You did it when you were in school. So at least some of us did. All the ones that are in control of the world are. So that is out of place right there. Okay. Now what we're going to do is uh, gonna take the rust. There's a little bit of rust in happening here. Just clean that up a little. Okay, we'll clean this up a little also. I'm going to use this 180 sandpaper, 180 grit sandpaper. Just kind of like sand that off.
so much better. Let's do this. That's probably another way to test this ignition module with the multimeter. Um, uh, I'll take a look at that and see what we can see what we can do with that. But let's try this for now. Let's try this without the uh, without actually using a multimeter to check and see if we, have, if we still have a functional part. Okay, so there you go. That looks so much better. All right. And now, I need to put this back. Just to put this back. Those screws go right in right there. Right. I'm going to use this as my spacer. Don't yell at me. I know it's too, it's probably just a small, small amount to, uh, to, uh, what do you call it? Um, little, as in thickness, depth. Hmm. <laughs> He's not the right screws. I don't know if they are. <laughs> uh, anyway. So <laughs> that's awkward. Let's see if I can find the right screws. One second. Oh, I found them. Okay. Yeah, that thread was a little too. The thread count was a little too low to match what was happening in here. see. Make sure you can see. Alright. I'm going to move you over to the side a little so you can get an unimpeded view. Okay. Just yell if I get out of frame. Or if I'm doing anything weird and crazy. I don't know. Doesn't look right either. What do you think? Oh, that's strange. Oh, that's why the thread the start pitch is also too. Wrong screw. Ah, I got it now. It's this. Ah, the details, the horror, the details. So again, these are uh, going to have a little bit of a higher, uh, you can see it, they're very uh, much higher uh, thread pitch, so they're different from the other coarse ones that uh, we pulled off earlier. It's okay, great. I'm using this as a spacer because I don't have a feeler gauge. I will invest in one, <laughs> maybe by the time this video is over. Let's see me whip out a feeler gauge. Um, but in the meantime, you can use like a, just a regular uh, three and a half inch card, which you would use to study flashcards, you know, you would make to study. That it happens to be the right thickness. Right. So, 
That should give us... Okay, that spins well. Okay. So it's going to give us a lot cleaner of a connection. Um, I think I can probably take a little bit of... What do you think? It's a good idea. I'm going to leave that alone. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a good idea to sand on that. All right, so here we go. Take this. I'm going to put the kill switch back on. Let's bring it around this side. going on. Alright, we're gonna put it back together and give it a try, shall we? And reconnect the kill switch. Slide that into the shaft. It won't fight too much. Hope. This definitely has to be lined up. Okay, there you go. That's lined up. It's got a, a four-sided, goes all the way down, shaft. Like that this is the, f on the um, actual motor itself, coming out of the bottom, that turns the shaft. The shaft is male, this is female, so it slides around it, and uh, these are friends of ours here, if you remember, I took, a, took three of these little things off. I'll bring you around on this side, it's a little bit of a shot. So here we go. I'm gonna put this back together. Give me a little light here. So. Okay, so getting this lined up is a little tricky. making a real-time video don't hide all the struggles okay. Go back out Let's see what's going on um, I want you to see something so right in here see that right there that's the shaft I was talking about. So this has to get lined up. All right. That right there slides into this motor. And then I have to get this inside of there so it sits neatly. With a little bit of fighting, I finally got it in. Um, it has, uh, it does have some keys. Um, uh, let's see if you can see it. I'll point at it for you. See right here? That right there is going to help you line it up. There's two of them. See how that, oh sorry. <laughs> Oops, just fell right out. Okay, so take a look at where that key is. That slides onto there. There's another one over here. Also, make sure 
this is on the outside. I was trying to put that in between there. Because I forgot. Alright. Not really worried about tightening these down too much. Not right now. I just need to see if I can get some spark out of this. So don't forget to remind me that I need to tighten these down. Let's see if we get some spark. That looks like a no. <laughs> All right. Close, but no scholarship. I like it. I want to show you a way to check this uh, spark to see if you get spark. I'm sorry. I want to show you a way to check to see if this magneto. I can't sit without laughing because I'm an X-Men fan. So uh, it also has a, a other names. Uh, um, ignition coil is another name for it. Um, magneto, and I think uh, there's another name. There are probably other names too, but those two are the ones that you'll see the most referred to. This part right here. Now, um, the air gap between uh, the magneto and the flywheel is uh, 0 0.01 inches. So it's one hundred one one hundredth of an inch, okay? And um, the uh, you use your feeler gauge to set that distance between the two, between the, um, you can turn the uh, flywheel to this magnetic part right here. I'll give you a better view so you can get an idea what I'm talking about um, when I put it back on, put the other part on. But I want to share something. So this is the old Magneto, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write O on it right here. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you how to do this. You take, this is a half inch, so I have a deep socket half inch. And I'm going to place that on top of this. And I'm going to spin it like this to look for spark. I'm going in a clockwise direction. So you can see there's no spark. I'm going to zoom down a little so you can get a better look. Also for clarification, you want to isolate the magneto as much as possible. And to do that, you want to take this kill switch and unplug it because um, that's going to give you, uh, you want to get rule out as many things as possible. So here's my spark plug, right? Take a look right there. See if you see any spark. This is the old magneto or uh, ignition coil. As you can see, there's no spark happening there. We're going to switch out this magneto and place the other one there, and then you'll see we'll have spark. Let's go ahead and take this old magneto off. 
I'm gonna put the new one. That's the L for the L2. You can know. That's what was that. Uh, these are T25 uh, head Torx 25 screws. When you put this back together, you're gonna have to uh, put some Loctite on the on these because they get a lot of vibration and they will move and you know close or expand the air gap between the flywheel and itself and that's going to ruin your spark. So I'll move that out of the way. Here's my new magneto. Ignition coil, whatever you want to call it. All right, so with my feeler gauge, right, it's set at a, it's hard to see, but it is, can you see that? It's 0.1, uh, is that better? Yeah, can you see that? No, yes, sort of, kind of, maybe, right there. So that's the uh, size, it's uh, 0.25 millimeters also. If you're trying to convert it, save yourself the hassle. So when we do this, what you want to do with the flywheel, uh, take a look right here. I want you to see something. See that right there? These, I, I cleaned these off with uh, some 220 sandpaper just to get rid of the rust. There's some rust on it, like that. This part right here creates a magnetic field which creates the current in the magneto itself. So what you want to do, right, and it's only right here. It's, uh, and then over here it's being balanced out on the other side with something else. I'm not sure what's in there, but it's got to match. The weight has to be even, right? And um, what you do, you take your uh, your um, your your, your uh, one hundredth of a uh, inch feeler gauge. And you're gonna slide it in right here, so it wraps around the two points of the uh, magneto. The two points being these two points. Uh, that. And that needs to wrap around that. Okay, so that's what I'm aiming for right now. Uh, did you see that? Okay. Yes, you did? Okay, good. So I'm aiming to get my uh, feeler gauge around this and this. And that's this is important because that's where the electricity is going to, the magnetic uh, field is going to create the electrical charge as it passes, as the flywheel passes by this. All right, here we go. So take. My feeler gauge. It's gonna slide it in between there, like that. Okay. So now it's in position. I take my screws. Now you can check your magneto. Um, using a uh, multimeter. I tried to do it, I uh, wasn't getting a good read in so it made sense. So I didn't want to show you something that that uh, doesn't add up. But I think, I have a feeling that, that, that this old magneto is actually still functional. I think the wire is broken because I checked the magneto itself. Actually, you know what I could do? I could check, yeah, never mind. <laughs> Yeah, it's just broken because I, th I just think, I don't know what part is broken, but it's definitely not set in a charge. And I did check it with the um, multimeter, but I was getting um, a similar uh, set of uh, values for this that does work. So I wouldn't want to misguide you. does have a torque value. Oh, sorry. You know what? I made a mistake. I forgot to turn. Let's uh, get a loosen this up again. So this magneto needs to uh, slide down so we can get the air gap set. So 
Ugh. Amateur move. Okay. okay, so we turn the flywheel. Turn the flywheel. The magnets are coming around. They're right here right now. And watch how this will slide down. See? So I turn it so the magnet pulls onto it. Okay, good. Now that's there. What I'll do is uh, tighten this up. I'll give you the uh, torque values uh, in a second. All right, so that's set, and it slides out quite nicely. Okay, good. Now I'll put this on. Okay. Oh, don't forget the swap. Remember, there's no kill switch attached to this. You don't want that. Now I want you to watch right here so you can see, look for the spark. I'm attaching a drill there, let's take a look. Did you see that? Now one more time. a lot of spark from this magneto and that's uh that's very telling um i hope you saw it let me try to yeah, adjust the camera again see if i can give it another angle i'm concerned you didn't see anything it's like what's the point of watching this if you didn't see anything yeah? um okay let's try this angle So that's it. We now know we have spark. Uh, we should try to. We're going to test and see if we uh, can get ourselves a little bit of a, um, get the engine just to run real quick. So we drop a little fuel in the spark plug chamber and see how that goes. I really should do this outside, but I have the fan open, windows ajar, and uh, you know it's not going to be on for too long. So either way, here we go. Um, so I got some true fuel. This uses a 50 to 1, and uh, I'm just going to see how I've never done this before. Try to squeeze it out of here with my baster. Alright. Nope. <laughs> okay, that should work. Let's give it a little bit of... It's a few drops. Too much. Let's get this away from the uh, away. Get the fuel source away from everything. Nothing flammable there. Let's take the spark plug. Put the spark plug back. Get some extra fuel drippage. Uh, I'm gonna wipe that off in a second. Careful not to drop anything in the spark plug chamber. Because it'll go right into the cylinder ahead and just destroy things. So. Alright, so we know we have sparks, so we're. That was good. We do have some compression also, I did check that. Alright, so this is the kill switch here if I need to turn it off. Let's see if we just get it running real quick. Just a quick start, shall we? This simulates pulling on the, the rewind. Oh yeah, it's not like busting, alright. 
Alright, let's see what's going on up here. Let's try it again. It is trying to start. One second. I placed it in the uh, uh, the chain so that way I can, um, you know, get a better way to start it and release. When the drill was on the flywheel, it was creating a problem where it was just <laughs> holding on to it. Excuse me, too long. I couldn't get started. So let's see if we have a better, better, better luck with the, uh, the uh, with it in the vise. Oh, that's not good. Yeah. Oh, one second. Well, I just broke my throttle cable. The little knob at the top. Oh well. Here we go. to run okay so what we have now is uh, we gotta we gotta order some parts right let me show you what we're gonna get all right so this entire carburetor has a kit that comes with it uh, it comes with a primer bulb we're gonna get that. Um, now we need a throttle cable. Awesome. So we get that, and then uh, we're gonna get a filter, air filter for this. This fuel tank is gone. It's a goner. There's nothing here. Just so you can see it. Um, Okay, so this fuel tank is missing this hose that comes into the carburetor. It's just broken off. It's also the one that's attached to the fuel filter. And then this is also just broken off. So we'll need to get a new entire um, f um, fuel tank. Okay? So let's go to pull it apart so you can see the conditions of everything, and then we'll go ahead and. Uh, We'll see what we have to order in more detail, all right? Not sure if you can see it or not, but the, the knob, it's right there. It usually uh, slides around the um, throttle. That is missing in action, because I broke it off. Because I when I put this on, I wasn't too careful, and I pulled on the throttle, and then all things fell apart. Okay, so that's what happened. Don't do that. Remove the air filter. We need to get to the carburetor. Slide that choke out. So there is the remainder of my air filter. That thing was uh, its last leg, as they say. And then in this this situation, I thought it was legless. Okay. Um, now I want to I need to get that carburetor out of there. So these two bolts right here. Um, not sure what they are. See what I got. Five sixteenths? What do you think? Nope. How about three eighths? Yep. They are three eighths.
Should I give you a little bit more light? One second. Fail. Okay. So, uh, so I'm gonna go Plan B, whatever that is. I usually like to stick with Plan A, but so Plan B is gonna be. I'm gonna uh, look for a wrench. Can we stick down there and continue? All right. It feels like some kind of a cruel joke. Um, not really sure why it's so uh, hard. Let's try it again. Be more forceful. Yeah, I think that'll do. I tried to put a three eighths in there and it just did not work. Okay. Sometimes you just never know how hard to push. Anyway, so that's good. I don't know if I asked you this already, but did anybody see Alita? I really, really like Alita. It was a good, good movie. Okay, so here's the kill switch. That's part of this. Um, Again, kill switch wraps around right here, sneaks around underneath here, and then comes up on top. Uh, okay. The uh, sign right here to the left side goes on the right, I mean, to the top, and then uh, this indentation here. You know, just helping us with the orientation so we go back to it. We're not uh, struggling too much to put it back together. Okay. Slide that around. And through. I wonder how hard it's going to be to get that uh, little wire for the uh, throttle cable. Uh, how uh, hard it's going to be. Uh, I'm hoping it'll be easy. Hope is a good thing. But eBay is even better. Alright, so let's see. Get this out of the way. See what's happening? It's hitting this paper here. Get it behind the paper. It's like a gasket, a heat gasket of some sort. Okay. Well, that's going to be a lot of fun to get back on. You know, I might not even need to take that off. Yeah, you know, I'm going to leave it as it is. I don't think I need to take this off. Leave that as that. Uh, let's go ahead and take this carburetor off. Um, carburetor. I think that's it. I think that it just pulls. 
yeah, there's nothing. Uh, They're really holding this together. Hmm. Before we proceed, let's take some photos so we can have something to reference. Alright, um, I don't see anything really holding this carburetor on. I see two screws of gold right through. Um, I guess we'll just pull on it. Let's see what happens here. Yep, that's it. So, as you can see, just push on it. it slides right off. Okay, so I'm going to need a primal bulb. And a gasket. This should have a diaphragm under here. So Get the whole thing. It, but there's a kit for this. Uh, let me see. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out what. Ah, uh, okay, good. This has some information on there. Let me clean it off so we can see what kind of carburetor this is. Don't forget to put on your glasses when you spray these things. It's, it's not good to get it in your eye. Interesting. This is a Zama, and it's made in China. Um, all right, that's all I have. Information I have. <laughs> Zama made in China. So let me. I mean, you can see it. So let's, let's see what you can see. Got a little too bright. Maybe. Is that it? Yeah, there you go. Almost. Come on. Come on. Oh, there you go. Maybe that's a little closer. So anyway, that is it right there. Zama. It's China written on it, so it's made in China. I'm going to see uh, what we can do. We have to get a, uh, a carb kit for this. I'm going to redo everything inside of it. Uh, I'll put the optional sonic cleaner on there also. Uh, these are two fuel lines that are broken. I'm um, going to let's put that aside and uh, just continue down the path of uh, trying to get some more pieces. Part of it. So we have the carb kit, air filter, uh, we have the ignition. Um, the throttle cable, this fuel, yeah, we're going to need a new fuel tank. Only reason why I say a whole entire one, this has a filter in it. I'm sorry, let's just pull this up so you can see. All right. Well, there you go. That just broke the other part that sits inside of there off. So this, everything is brittle on this thing. Um, so we're going to get a, have to get an entire fuel tank. The fuel tank comes with these two lines and uh, so we get the fuel tank. Uh, the 
we'll have to check and see the status of this. See, make sure it's not uh, the exhaust is not uh, you know, like stuffed up with like leaves or grass or whatever. All right, so there you go. We get all those things get ordered. Uh, everything goes well. It'll be a seamless transition from the time I turn that off until I turn it back on. And you're like, oh my god, it's like magic. Good job, Lex. Thanks. Anyway, all right. Hey, thanks again, and uh, keep hanging out. I'll be back in a flash of an eye. So that was weird. I think I said it wrong. I think it was supposed to be the blink of an eye, not the flash of an eye. Anyway, um, I didn't get too far. It's still the same day. The carburetor itself, <laughs> Zama makes quite a bit of them. Kind of need it. I thought I can uh, eyeball it, figure it out. But now, so what I did find out was uh, on this side over here should be in numbers that uh, that indicate the uh, the body type, and I think on this side. Um, one of the other sides over here has the uh, actual carburetor type, car carburetor model. So, or maybe they're both in this side. We'll clean it off, get a better idea, see what, see what we're dealing with. It's a little dirty. Just want to pull these pieces off here. Wonderful. Thing is just so interesting. Okay. They had to come off anyway, so now or later. Don't fight the inevitable. Okay. That's great. I don't think I can see anything. See a lot of crud. That's what I see. I don't see anything yet. Come on. Oh, well, there's some numbers. I see numbers. Yes, I do. I see some numbers. Good. I'm batting out here. Okay. All right. Maybe we take the gasket off? What do you think? I don't know. There should be model and make numbers somewhere on this thing. Not this one. 
They're like, oh, you're gonna have to guess. Um, yeah, let's take that gasket off. Let's see what, see what, uh, see what goodies are there for us. Is any information underneath this gasket? You know what they say, always cut towards yourself. Oh, man. Disastrous. Thank God that ended well. Okay. in my head here looking for something anything give me something My plan B to get the model number for this would be uh, I can call one of the um, home light certified uh, repair places. Let's, let's ask them for the uh, carburetor model number and go from there. That's another way to go about it. I always dig around the internet too and see what I find. Someone might have listed that information somewhere. Uh, at this moment, I do not see any information whatsoever on this carburetor that tells me the model number, only the maker. I don't have any body type information either on this thing here. It's always the hardest part, isn't it? Trying to figure out what you're working with. Okay. Um, yeah, do you see anything? Well, I'm searching. I thought those were uh, write-ins, but... And no, they're not. That way there. I thought it was like... Number or so maybe it was at one point, but it's not right now. Oh man, I just messed that shot up. Sorry about that, folks. Yeah. It's as if I'm drunk and making videos or something. Anyway, I'm not drunk, I'm just struggling. Yeah, okay, great. So that leaves me to plan B, which is probably going to search on the internet for a little bit and see what I can find. And then I'll go to plan C, which is call one of those retailers. All right, thanks for hanging out, and uh, I'll see you in the blink of an eye. I got it right, see? At this point, what we can do is stop right here just rebuild the carburetor and uh, you know everything should work I have all the parts now most of the parts uh, this was really interesting uh, these two like I guess they're heat shields or heat gaskets I'm not sure what they are um, but the heat is in the name when you look these up I can only get one of them I can find easily I don't even remember which side it is 
The other side, not so easily. I have a feeling this might be the easier side. Either way, I gotta be careful with these because I can't, I'm not gonna replace both of them. So what I wanna do, I know that I looked into this cylinder chamber here. The, uh, there's a lot of like, um, build up from all the years of service that this is in service on the cylinder top of the head. So I'm going to pull this cylinder head off and go ahead and clean it out. Um, to do that, again, you can, you don't have to do this. I'm just going a little bit further because I want to get this as really nice, you know, it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't cause me any harm to go a little deeper and I want to also learn a little bit more about this. So you can just stop right here and rebuild it and call it a quits, but I'm going to go a little deeper and see what I can do to even get this a little better. Um, so now I'm going to try to do that piston head. I need to uh, get to three bolts. So uh, it's two right here. And we have one right here. And that bolt is... Uh, this is going to be the harder one to remove, so I'll just shine a little light in there for you. That one's going to be the harder one. This is going to be the harder one to remove. And to get to it, I'm going to have to remove this fuel tank. Um, I decided not to get a new fuel tank because this fuel tank is fine. I just needed to get the lines and the filter, so I got that separate. So I'm looking forward to like uh, put it in that, putting that in, and not uh, a quart not using any extra stuff, wasting stuff. All right, let's do it. Let's see, uh, let's move forward. So I've never pulled a fuel tank off. Um, I know that there's a rubber bush in there and two rubber bushings here. I, th I think it slides, but I'm not sure. Instead of fighting with it, maybe we should just unscrew that, pull that off, and it seems like a good, safe guess. Yeah, let's try that instead. Let's just unscrew that back part. Now again, I think these are T25s. Um, everything seems to be T25 on this. Yeah, at the, they, yes they are. Um, not have to do this but I don't know so let's do it I don't want to don't want to break anything there. seems like I'm using a lot of excessive force and it's not really the most um, difficult part to remove and put back so I'm not afraid of uh, taking this Part a little bit more. Holy cow, I wish I had some power tools. Which I do, but I wish I, I wish I was using them. So that's that screw right there. That's what that looks like. And there's four of them. A label sits at the bottom. Okay, great. That's good. That has a gasket there. That's good to know. I'm going to clean this out. That is the... Uh, the very bottom of the uh, piston, which drives the uh, the shaft. So that's cool. All right, so this should just come right off. Yeah, that's a good idea. See that slid in here. That bushing goes like right there. It's obviously damaged. 
Not because of me. I break other things, but I didn't break this. And uh, I'm going to clean that out before I put it back together. Now this is out of the way. Um, I want to just get the piston head off. piston head off. <laughs> that sounds kind of funny. I want to remove the bolts, these three bolts, so I can get to the... Okay, so that's what they look like. Uh, you can see right here. So we have three of those we're going to pull. And that should allow me to to slide the uh, cylinder head off. Definitely has some burning happening. There, let's take a look. Okay. So we have a gasket here at the top or bottom, sorry. And uh, inside of the uh, chamber itself, it's very smooth, so we're not we're not um, we're not worried about damage. Any sort of rehoning necessary. Okay. And what I wanted to what I wanted to do is this. See how dirty that is? I want to clean that up. Um, that's what I want to do. So let's see. Now I don't know how to pull this off. Is it just yeah it just slides right off. Okay, great. So just slide that off like that. Okay. Orientation matters to me, so I'm just put that back on. Get a mental note. What's happening here? We both can get a mental note. So this All right, has some words on it. And the three A 3A is facing the opposite of this, like that, okay? 3A is that way. Numbers are on that side. My concern is trying to put it back like this. Even though it seems to be symmetrical. Oh, okay, great. So, I actually wanted to do a compression test before we pull it apart this much, but we're here, and we're going to deal with it. So I want to take this and clean this in the um, ultrasonic cleaner, and I'll clean out inside of there also. Let's go 
some crud. And, um, yeah. Okay, cool. Sounds good to me. I would like to take uh, this apart some more just to see how we can isolate this chamber so we can place it in the ultrasonic cleaner. Um, to do that, I have to remove some of these gaskets. Now, like I said to you, I, I ordered this gasket. I didn't tell you that, but I did order a new one. Uh, this is, I think this is easier to find, or one of those two on the side are easier to find than the other. And uh, so I have to be cautious with uh, removing these. So let's go ahead and do it because, you know, I'm feeling adventurous and I really don't think I have much to lose. Um, so I'm going to pull this side up first. Again, these are T25s. Now these are the longer, um, a little longer than the uh, previous ones I took off. They also have washers on them. Look like this. <laughs> Boy, those cat-like reflexes. Yeah, like a dead cat reflex. Okay, so here we go. Place these over here. Now this should come off. Famous last words. Let's see what we have. slide right off or just come right off it doesn't seem to want to come right off let's go ahead and take a couple stabs at it so we can do it right here okay this definitely wants to come up graphic not really okay so that's that I'm gonna leave this just like this because again I don't have this gasket and I don't want to uh, have to uh, not be able to put this back together so I'm gonna leave that like that and uh, just for orientation purposes you can definitely see how it sits right, so put that to the side we're almost there. Let's uh, take this off. This is a T25. Yeah, I'll probably yeah, dip the 
I'll remove these and see what's under that because this gets clogged. All right, we have this gasket that is also in need of a little suggestion. It didn't come off for the other side. So let's see if we can get this off. Let's try this below first. So that gasket is off. I'm just gonna put that to the side. I have another one. I don't have it today, but I do have a replacement for this. It's not super complicated. You can tell the orientation. All right. Now we have one more gasket. Now, if this gasket is the one that's hard to, oops, boy, that's brittle. That's that's really good. All right. So this might be a problem. Don't be afraid in life. Don't do it. Don't be afraid. Just keep moving. Okay. So I'm trying to take this off without damaging it much more than what it is right now. Because I'd like to reuse it because I do not have an extra. And that is because I'd like to put this in the ultrasonic cleaner. If I fail, some of you are going to be like, I told you so. If not, I'll just order it if I can. If this is the set I can order. If not, then, uh, as they say, I'm poop out of luck. trying to save at this point. Uh, I feel like I should just bite the bullet in this one. Oh boy. <laughs> that's, that's good. All right, just keep going. Don't worry about it. That's life. Things happen. At this point, I can't really save much, um, so I can be a little bit more forceful. It's... All right, so that's that broken off. caked on gasket right here. I think that might be a lot easier to try to remove after it's been soaking in, a, in the ultrasonic cleaner. Right now, fighting with this, 
the razor blade is going to cause more, cause damage to the surface. That, and uh, I don't want to, I don't want to compromise the surface. So what I'll do, I'll uh, see. What is that? If I can't even put this in the ultrasound cleaner, it looks like plastic. Yeah. That is plastic. Alright. So, this part here feels plasticky to me. And that means I could put it in the ultrasound cleaner, but it has to be suspended like that. So. Alright, let's get this uh, spark plug off. Spark plugs out. Yeah, it's pretty. A lot of carbon deposits there. Let's clean. This needs. Some lemon. All right, great. So we get it all separated. We're gonna try to see how we move forward from this point. Um, let's continue. Uh, this piston has a ring, one ring. Uh, this is another part that's really difficult to get by itself. So I couldn't really replace it. Um, I wanted to do a blow-by test before I actually uh, pulled this apart, but I did not. I wanted to get a feel for like what's happening. Uh, I felt this, this just feels like metal all the way around and no plastic. So I was wrong about that. So this whole thing will go in the ultrasonic cleaner. Um, the reason why it looked like plastic to me because the, uh, all the metal is just, you know, it's all burnt up from combustion. A, um, The exhaust. So I'll pull these off. So I will definitely dip that into the ultrasonic cleaner. So this has these really long screws. Goes in like that. Okay. Now let's get these off and uh, see what's in here, shall we? has some really small screws. Three of them. So it look like this. And uh, that's three of those. And uh, this X is up top. The wire mesh below is wonderful. It's super clean. So that's good. We'll, we'll bathe we'll bathe bathe all of these. Okay. Alright, now we gotta pull the carburetor apart. Now Alright, here. We're gonna probably I'm going to use a separate tray for this, just to keep the uh, screws. Um, you know, separate. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, let's take some photos of this so that we can have an idea of uh, what we're working with and so we can put it back together.
This part of the carburetor is really, really small pieces. And uh, this is a Phillips right there. I want to take that out. structure of this. We have where the needle and seat is. This is slides. Okay. It slides over. And we have a spring. And the seat itself down there. I'm sorry, the needle. The needle's in really good condition, really sharp. Okay, so we have this mostly pulled apart and I'm gonna leave this attached, like I said, it's all metal. There's nothing else for me to unscrew. I don't think I want to go and mess with this. I'm not really sure how to pull this apart. Um, all this plasticky parts here. I'm concerned that uh, I'll start yanking on stuff and then it'll just break it. So I'm going to have to suspend this like that so that way it doesn't, um, you know, go too far down. All right, so let's go ahead and. Uh, Get the ultrasonic cleaner ready, and uh, we'll give give these things a bath. Uh, I'll probably have to come back about five days from now and uh, see if I can, uh, if I'm successful at finding a gasket for that, or maybe find another way to see if there's a gasket that can be made to place in that position. All right. Well, moving on.